Hey there, it's Lisa Spangler here with a video for Alta New, and we're kicking off the December release with a blog hop, and I have so many fun things to show you that are in this release. To start off, check out this gorgeous new peony spray stamp that's in the release. It also comes with a matching die, and more about that later. But for the sake of time, I went ahead and embossed it with the Alta New embossing ink and clear embossing powder. I know you can't see that really well, but I wanted to show you this really fun technique. So here I have a plate with some leftover pink and bronze watercolors that I was using for another project. These colors are so pretty, I just couldn't bear to clean off this plate just yet. And I'll have a full supply list for you in my blog post after this video. So, but anyhow, I'm really watering down this color. It was already pretty well loved and used, as you can see, so it's not very dark. But I wanted it to be really super, super light. And I'm just going to go here and color it all over that peony with this super light pink watercolor. And I'm not being very careful, I'm just trying to stay in the lines of the peony itself. But once I get into the center of the flower, I'm just splashing this paint on here and there. And this is a way to get really beautiful coloring on your flowers without having to spend a lot of time. So this would be a great card to mass produce. The trick is you want to start with a really, really juicy light color like this pink here. And I'm kind of mixing it up. As you can see, I'm putting on a little bit of darker pink and a little bit of lighter and a little bit of that bronze color that was on the plate. And I thought I'd speed this up so because this is kind of the boring part right here is just putting down this first layer of juicy light color. So that looks pretty good. So now it's on to the next step and this is where the magic happens. So here's my little palette that I have. I take this palette everywhere with me and I'm going to be dropping in some darker colors while that light color is still nice and wet and juicy. So I'm going to start off with this really dark maroon color and I'm loading up my brush really, really dark and I'm starting in the center and I'm just tapping the color in. And what this does is it'll blend with that light pink color that we started with and make a really pretty new color. And since we embossed this, it's going to stay within each petal on the peony. Then after I do some of that dark maroon, I'm going to switch back to a lighter pink. And I'm just going to keep working my way around the flower and dropping in the pink and the maroon and maybe a little bit of coral too. We'll have to see how this is looking. There's no right or wrong way to really do this. So now the flower is dry and I zoomed in here so that you can see this better. And I thought I would just go ahead and add a little bit of detail. So I loaded my brush with paint and I'm just kind of tapping it where I want the little details to be. And the key here is you don't want to use too much water because then that'll activate the layer of color that's underneath. So you can um, tap your brush off on a paper towel and that way you can make sure you don't have too much water, just like that. Just give it like a little tap and then you can blend the color out. So tap and blend, just like that. So now that peony looks pretty good. You don't wanna overdo things at this step. Just kinda of leave it how it was. And now it's time to work on the leaves. So I'm going to switch and I'm going to use this other handmade palette that I have um, with a bunch of watercolors in this former chocolate tin. That chocolate was so good, you all. And I have some greens and some blues here on this ceramic palette. As you can see, I can't bear to wash away color. I love watercolor so much, and I'm trying to watercolor a little bit every day. So that's why I have all these different palettes around here. But anyhow, I'm going to do the leaves the same way. I'm going to start out with a light green color, and I'll zoom in here so you can see this better. There we go. And so I have that light green color there on the leaf 
And next I'm going to tap in some blue. And that, this is because peony leaves are kind of this like rich, dark green, greenish color. But anyhow, I'm just doing this the same way. So while the light green is still wet, I'm tapping in that bluish color right on top of it. And then the two colors, since it's wet, will blend together and merge into a new color. So once again, starting with a light green, just like this. And then tapping in some of the blue. And sometimes when you have it on a palette like this, the two colors will merge together and that's really cool too. And sometimes I like to just keep tapping, 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 tapping. And what this does is it will really put a lot of whatever color in there and it'll push the other color out of the way. And you get a really cool effect by doing it that way too. So on to the next leaf, starting once again the same way with the light color. And then tapping in some darker color. And when you're first starting out with this technique, it's really great to have your stamped image embossed. It just makes it so much easier because the embossing keeps everything in line. So I went ahead and finished coloring in the leaves and now it's time to show you the star of this whole December release. This is the new Altenew mini die cut machine and this is the cutest thing. It's like my new little best friend. It's so lightweight, you can take it anywhere, and it comes with two cutting plates. There's a thick one and a thinner one. Hope you can see that there. And then to use this, you just sandwich your paper with the die as you normally would, and then run it through the machine. It is like so cute. So here is the coordinating peony spray die and I've went ahead and taped it in place and now to die cut it you just take the thick plate and then you sandwich your um, colored project in between with the thin plate on top or at least that's how I do it and I should point out that this is three inches wide, which it, for me, it will fit most of the dies in my collection. So I'm going to rotate this guy so that the handle is closest to me so you can see this all in action. So we move that out of the way. So you just put your sandwich right in the slot in the front and then turn the handle. I like to hold it a little bit until it gets going. And then you just keep cranking, cranking, cranking. And you can kind of hear it cut a little bit there as it gets in the middle. But there you have it. And this is nice, heavy watercolor paper and it comes right out. Look at that. Ta-da! Awesome! So I ended up making three of these flowers because once I get started, I can't seem to stop. And I to finish up the cards, I just die cut some sentiments from gold specialty paper. And the mini die cut machine handled these really well too. But there you can and I have see to the say that I really do love how easy this technique is. I like to just put on music and then I just color away because you don't really have to think too much about it. And then here you can see once again the sentiment that was cut out of the gold specialty paper. And of course I couldn't stop there. I had to make some more cards. This card was inspired by the pattern that's on the mini die cut machine itself. And I just stamped the peony spray in rose gold <clears throat> ink and then embossed it in clear again. And I lightly watercolored it using the same pinks and greens. And then I just had to try to die cut the festive silhouette deer out of wood veneer paper that's also in the same specialty pack that I got the gold paper from. And I have to say that the mini die cut machine cut that wood veneer like butter. So thanks so much for joining me today and I hope you'll give these techniques a try. Thanks for watching.